and welcome back to another All Heart video. Today we are going to be talking all about Montessori furniture. So I know that we've kind of tackled a few Montessori subjects here and there, but I feel that we should kind of start at the beginning as far as incorporating different Montessori furniture into our playrooms or into our homes. Now, traditionally, when you're looking at Montessori pictures online, you are going to see that the recurring theme in all of these Montessori classrooms are that everything is made out of wood, everything is nice and streamlined, all of the colors are nice and muted, calming and soothing. So those are things to keep in mind when choosing your own types of furniture for your play space or for your home. Now, there are a lot of different types of furniture to choose from. And just keep in mind that because we are setting up Montessori in the home, we do have a lot more flexibility in the types of materials that we are able to choose to incorporate into our space. So the one thing that I want you to take from this video is that you are not required to have every single piece of furniture that I'm going to mention in this video. I think there are a few pieces that are key and that I'm going to suggest that you uh, perhaps look into investing in. And like I said, it doesn't have to be like top level expensive materials in order for you to be doing Montessori any correct way. I know that all of our spaces are different. Some of us may be able to allot a larger space um, for our playroom. Um, some of us may be able to kind of utilize an entire room as a playroom and others are able to just incorporate perhaps just a shelf or a corner in a room and that is absolutely fine. Um, not one is better than the other. We are each trying to do the best that we can and I definitely do love Montessori so much and I love the fact that you are able to kind of do it whichever way that you can so long as you are still kind of sticking with the Montessori principles. So again, that doesn't mean that you are required to purchase every single piece of furniture that I am going to be mentioning today. So let's start off with one of the most important pieces of furniture that I feel you should have or that you should at least try to invest in when setting up your playroom or your home. And that would be a child size desk and chair. Now that there are a few different materials to choose from. Now in our playroom, we have both a wooden table and we also have a metal table. I personally feel that the metal table is a lot easier to clean. Um, but like I said, you're able to kind of pick and choose whatever table you decide to go with, depending on the size space that you have and also your budget, clearly. Just make sure that when you are looking at purchasing a desk for your child, make sure that it is the appropriate height. So you want to make sure that the chair and the desk are toddler size. And that's usually between anywhere from like 16 inches, 18 inches, no taller than 24 inches. I believe 24 inches is about the standard. Um, and when you are looking for a child size chair, uh, try and make sure that your child is able to reach the floor with their feet. Um, that way their feet aren't dangling and there's no fear of them kind of falling off when they're trying to get off the chair. You also want to choose a chair that is lightweight. And what I mean by that is a chair that they are e able to move around when needed. So if they need to kind of shift the chair to go to perhaps another table, if they want to sh uh, shift the chair in order for them to be able to read quietly somewhere, then you are able to do so without your help. So just something that is lightweight that they are able to move. Now that there, there are a few different styles of tables that you are able to introduce. If you are looking at primarily sticking to Montessori materials, then you do want to stick with wood. Um, if you are looking at Montessori classrooms um, online, on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, you're going to see that all of the furniture pieces basically look the same. They are the same light colored pieces of wood. They are obviously made out of durable materials and they are all child size. Now, if you are looking at incorporating Montessori in, a, in the home, like I said, you are able to choose 
um, whatever types of materials are going to work for you. Just make sure that it is child size. Now you can either choose to go with perhaps a square size table or you can uh, go for perhaps a, rectang a rectangular table if you have you know more than one child. Or if you're looking at incorporating more of a social aspect, then perhaps a round table would be better suited for your space. That way they are able to kind of paint together, they're able to draw together. If they are working on a puzzle or some sort of activity, they are able to do it together and um, they'll have that social aspect with a round table. This is another example of a desk that you can kind of choose to go with. And I love this type of desk, especially if you have an area where it's a little bit smaller and you can't have like your desk chairs and desk out at all times. And I like that this one can kind of convert itself into something else. So as you can see, you can also turn it into a bit of a, like a little lounge sofa. So if you have this perhaps next to their books, then it could become a nice quiet little area for them to sit down and read. And at the end of the day, when they're done, they can kind of bring their chairs back inside and then that doesn't eat up a lot of your space. So again, it's a really nice option for you um, if you're looking at trying to save some space in that room. A child size mirror is also something that you may want to incorporate into your playroom or into your home. Now there are a couple of different options. Just make sure that the ones that you are choosing are child safe. There are a little bit more expensive options like something like this where they are able to um, kind of place it horizontally, especially if you have like a baby, these would be perfect for them because as they grow, you can kind of transition it and then you can kind of situate it upright. Um, but a, a mirror is just so important for them to be able to kind of see themselves in the mirror, to be able to kind of uh, observe all of their different features, all of their different characteristics, and it'll also prove helpful when they are trying to dress themselves. So just having something like this um, would be, again, very, very helpful in their playroom or in their bedroom. You obviously don't have to go this route. You can obviously choose to go with something that's a little bit more simple. Um, and a little bit more budget friendly. Just make sure that again, it's something that is child safe. So the next item that I feel is pretty important to try and have in your space is a shelf. And I get a lot of questions on the shelving units that I have in my playroom. I've got a couple different ones. They're not all from the same space. So I have some that are a lot more expensive and then I have a few other inexpensive options to choose from. So the ones that I get the most questions about are these right here. And these are the Ikea Calyx shelves. Now these are, again, like I said, they're inexpensive. They're, uh, I believe they're about like between 60 and $70 and they are rather large. So for the amount of room that you get, I think it's uh, very well priced. And the thing that I like about these types of cubbies are that it's easier for you to be able to display each activity per shelf. So that makes it a lot easier for you as a parent to know exactly how many, how many activities to present on the shelf at a time. So these allow for one activity per cubby. And then you have the top shelf where you can kind of present whatever you want at the very top. Now, if you are looking at um, getting a shelf for multiple children, let's say you have two children, one older, one younger, then you also want to think about how many levels of shelves you want to incorporate into your space. So if your space only allows for one shelf, then perhaps getting a shelf with more than two levels would be ideal. That way you can place the activities for your youngest child on the bottom shelf, and then you can place the activities for your older children at the top of the shelf. And just make sure that you are placing all of the materials um, that perhaps have uh, smaller pieces higher up on the shelf and that way your littlest one won't get into them. But um, that's something to keep in mind when you are kind of picking and choosing shelves for your space. Now, you don't have to go the cubby route. Let me go ahead and show you another example of a shelf that I have. Um, that kind of incorporates both. So this one is just a little bit shorter than the Calyx shelves, but as you can see, it has the three different cubbies and then it has these longer ones here. So if I want to just kind of set up activities um, 
on the shelf here, then I have a lot more space, especially if I have a larger tray, then I can go ahead and do that. And then on the bottom, I could um, situate the smaller activities, one in each cubby. So you so. can also decide to go with something that's smaller. Again, if your space is much smaller and you can kind of only um, incorporate a smaller size style shelf, then maybe something like this would work for you. Now they sell these in like the two tiers and also the three tiers. And what I like about these is that you're able to kind of host them uh, vertically. You can post them vertically or you can turn them to the side and have them um, horizontally to display your activities that way. So this is like the perfect size um, shelf to incorporate in a smaller playroom or um, perhaps in a smaller kind of corner of, of the um, bedroom in your child's room. And they are also very inexpensive. I believe they range anywhere from like 25 to $35. Um, so again, they incorporate that cubby style that these larger shelves do. And then you also have that top space where you are able to display perhaps books or puzzles or something of that nature, and they would work perfectly fine. So the next item that you may want to incorporate in your child's bedroom is a floor bed. And this is very traditional of Montessori um, to have a floor, you know, a floor bed for your child. And that is just because it is a lot safer for them to be able to climb in and out of. And of course, as a parent, that's kind of our main worries when we are transitioning our child into a larger bed is that if we get a bed that is too high, they can roll off and really hurt themselves. So having a floor bed is... Um, a lot easier for them to again get in and out of. Now you can, the easiest route to go through is to just place the mattress on the floor and then you're done. Um, so that is perhaps the easiest thing that you can do. Now if you uh, don't like the look of the bed kind of touching the floor, they also sell um, like these little floor bases and they're just like wooden slats that you can place the mattress on top of. And again, it's still on the floor, but then you don't have the floor touching uh, your bed. So this is another option. Or you can just choose to go with a low level um, toddler size bed and that would also work perfectly for your child as well. So there are a few options to choose from. Again, you'll probably go with something that kind of works with your aesthetic. I know that these kinds of beds are incredibly popular and you could find them on Amazon or Ikea. And um, I mean, they're, they're super, super cute. So I know why a lot of parents kind of gravitate towards those as well. But just so long as the bed is closer to the floor and yeah, that's going to work. So a step stool is another one of those items that I feel are incredibly important to have in your playroom and in your home. So I've got a few of these. I've got one in my kitchen, one in our bathroom in our home, and then we have one here in our playroom. And this just kind of facilitates um, a lot of our children's movements when they're trying to reach the sink to wash their hands, when they're trying to reach the toilet, when they're trying to reach a cupboard, when they are trying to reach the uh, countertop when they're fixing a meal or a snack or something like that. So this is just going to make it a lot easier for them to be able to reach things. I mean, even for myself who is, you know, 5'4", I'm pretty sure I'm using my own stool to kind of reach things. And I know how much difficult life would be if I didn't have my own set of stools to be able to do things. So just imagine for your little one, and it's also going to make them feel a lot more as a, a part of that community within your home if they're able to kind of help you do things and they are able to easily access things um, for themselves. So choosing a stool um, is incredibly important and I think it's one that you definitely want to try and get for your home. Now, there are a lot of different ones to choose from, and I feel like just just like every other piece of Montessori furniture, you can get one that is less expensive and then you can kind of go up from there. So they do start off simply, there are some that are made out of plastic. I would not recommend the plastic ones just because they are not very durable, and I feel like they're not very sturdy. So if you can kind of opt for one that is made out of wood, that would be my best suggestion. And there are a few that are a little bit more economical in price. 
So um, there are ones that have like the two steps. Some of them have like the, the grip material so that it's easier for them to step up and step down without slipping. There are some that incorporate little handrails so it's easier for them to climb up and off. And there are also ones that are a lot bigger that kind of enclose them completely. And these are ones that are suggested, you know, in the kitchen. Now, because we have a galley kitchen, our space does not allow for something this large. So we just kind of use the two step wooden stool that we have and that works perfectly for us. But again, whatever suits your budget, whatever suits your style and your space, um, there are a lot of different ones to choose from. So having an area where your child can kind of hang their coats, their hats, their backpacks, somewhere to place their shoes, I feel like that is incredibly important into kind of maintaining that tidiness and that routine that is so important in Montessori. So if you are perhaps renting um, your home or your apartment or something like that and you can't, you know, drill holes into the wall, then you can choose hooks that are on the command strips and just place them low enough on the wall that they are able to place their jackets and their hats on their own. Um, there are also ones where, where you can possibly hang like a little basket and that way they could put their sunglasses or you know any of their accessories. Just allowing the space to be set up for your child to be able to do these things on, your, on their own is the most important thing. Now, if you are able to kind of drill things into the wall, then you may may want to have something like this. And this is something that I have in my playroom and in my home. And it's actually like a set of little hooks that you're able to just kind of drill into the wall. And that way they are able to hold, um, you know, multiple things at once. And if your space allows for it, then you can opt to get something like this, which is a lot bigger. Um, I mean, these are obviously very, very beautiful, but they do cost a little bit more and they are also going to require its own set of space. But um, they are able to kind of sit on these. They are able to take off their shoes, place their shoes, backpacks, coats, in the same way that um, the hooks would. But obviously this is a lot uh, bigger piece of furniture. So again, there are different options to choose from and hopefully one of these would kind of fit in your space. So the next piece of furniture would be an area for your children to keep their clothes. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to purchase a type of, you know, like freestanding wardrobe where your children are able to kind of pick and choose their clothes or anything like that. You don't have to go that route although that route is extremely, you know, aesthetic and it looks very, very, cool, you know, beautiful. That doesn't mean that you are required to have something like this. This is just an example. Now, what I did since my space did not allow for something like that, I removed the cupboards from the bottom of the dresser that we have in our bedroom and I'll show you the example. And then I was able to place baskets and in the baskets, are different types of clothes that they would need for the day, such as shirts, pants, socks, undergarments, and PJs. And that way my son or my daughter is able to kind of pick and choose what they want to wear throughout the day and they are able to access it. So the next item that I would definitely recommend is having some sort of area for your children's books. Um, it's incredibly important to have something like this in order to really help with that language development to help with their vocabulary and you know also just providing like a quiet corner for them to be able to kind of sit and relax and read and unwind is incredibly important um, for their development so you can go with something that's a little bit more traditional again a little bit more expensive are like these freestanding wooden shelves um, you do want to make sure that you set up an area where they're able to kind of visibly see all of the books and that way um, it's easier for them to kind of pull them out and choose the book that they're looking for. Now, if the budget doesn't allow for something like this, then there are some like this one that has kind of the cotton dividers and um, it works the same way. You're still able to kind of visibly see all of the books and is, it is also a lot less expensive. Now, if your space doesn't allow for something like this, there are some like the one that I have in my space where that I was able to kind of place on the wall. And if you don't have the space for that, then there are also like smaller little shelves. And I actually found these 
um, at Ikea, there are some on Amazon. There's a lot of different options for these. And even if you just have one, just a little area where they can host kind of two or three books, that would be absolutely perfect. I would recommend kind of setting an area where you can possibly have like some throw pillows where they can sit down and relax and be comfy while they read. And if you can't kind of have an individual space for this, then perhaps just kind of propping some pillows up on their bed um, would work just as well. But like I said, with um, in creating your playrooms, I'm sure you could get a lot more creative. And if your budget and your space allows for it, you can obviously get a little bit more elaborate in the details. Having an area where your child is able to kind of pick their art materials, I feel like that would be a great addition to your playroom um, or to your home. And that doesn't mean that you have to purchase a whole other shelf in order to kind of um, have all of their art displays out for them. But um, even something like this, I have something like this in our child's bedroom and I was able to place a lot of their coloring books, a lot of their construction paper there. Um, also in like little canisters, I was able to place like their markers, their colored pencils. It's just something for them to be able to kind of pick and choose the materials that they need. Everything is nice and tidy and they can also return those materials back and they know exactly where it's going to go. So having um, some sort of either shelf or cart or you know something perhaps near their little work table, um, that would also be another piece of furniture that I would recommend um, when you are trying to create your space and when you're trying to plan out your space for your child. So I hope that this video was helpful and it kind of gave you a little bit more ideas of that uh, Montessori furniture kind of starter kit. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that like button. If you guys still have a few questions on Montessori furniture options, please make sure to leave them in the comments below. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future Montessori videos and ring that notification bell so that you're notified of when I next post a video. Um, I hope you guys come back this week as I will be showing you how to create a Montessori inspired desk. Um, like I said, for our space, I was not able to find the appropriate size desk that I needed. So I opted for creating my own and that in turn um, ended up saving us a lot of money and it was the perfect size. So it worked really, really well for us. So hopefully um, that'll work out for you guys as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys. I hope that this video was very helpful. I hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you guys back here in a couple of days. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.